Hello everyone and welcome to the Green Man channel. Hope you're doing good and well. So time for another horror themed tier list, but this time I'm tackling final goals. All these final goal characters from um, lots of horror films. I should stress these final goals are just from horror films I've actually seen. I haven't included any final goals from horror films I haven't seen. So if you're wondering, oh, but where's where's this final goal? Where's that final goal? That's because I probably haven't seen those films. So for instance, there's a few Friday the 13th films that uh, you know aren't here or Friday the 13th final girls that aren't here um but that's simply because I just you know I've been trying to watch through a lot of these films lately to prepare for this tier list and I decided you know what I don't think I'm going to get through all the Friday the 13th um you know it costs money to stream these films and everything so I just decided you know what uh, we'll just go with this list for this Friday the 13th now, of course, the categories for each of these are self-explanatory. You've got the icons. These are the most influential final girls, uh, not just influential as characters, but I think influential on the horror as a genre as well, on horror as a genre too. Then you've got warriors. These are the final girls I think are really strong and tough and usually very courageous, put up a really good fight against the villains. So that will be who goes into the warrior category for me. Underrated are those final girls. I think are all survivors, you know, and um, they're often, I think, perhaps also final girls I consider a bit underrated as uh, characters in whichever films they're in. You've also got Leave It to Fate. These are the final girls. I'm not really caring so much about what happens to them. So I'm just going to say Leave It to Fate, but I don't necessarily want them to be killed off. So that's that category. But then there's a category where I really don't care about these characters. And it's like, well, just leave it to the killer to decide, which sounds kind of nasty, right? But that's the that's how the tier list is working. Now, of course, I have seen other horror tubers do this. I've seen Cody Leach. I've seen his tier list. Um, and I've seen Possessed by Horror do this tier list as well, I think. But so this is my own spin on these. Um, I've got mostly a random selection. As I say, these are actually the films that I've I've seen um, with a few of my own choices here too. So let's start with Ripley from Alien and Aliens and the Alien franchise, right? She is pretty much legendary by this point. She has to go into Icon. She cannot go anywhere else. I'd be very surprised if anyone disagrees with that. Um, Ripley's great in the first film, Alien, because she's the smartest one there. I think the one that is making, you know, the most sensible decisions, but isn't really being listened to in, in at times in that first film. But she's definitely one of the most strongest, even though it's her first time in this situation with this awful scenario, with this unknown organism, this awful alien. Um, and then you've got Aliens, which is a sort of, you know, that sees her evolve a bit more, both as kind of a motherly character towards Newt, but also, once again, this kind of action figure, this heroine who is absolutely formidable in Aliens and clearly the strongest character there. I think I do like Hicks, but we're going to come to maybe a final guys tier list at some point. And I was thinking of including Hicks on that one. But anyway, that's enough with Ripley. She's definitely an icon for me. Next up, we have um, Jesse Burlingame from the um, Wrong Turn franchise. Um, only seen the first Wrong Turn. And I do think her character kind of grows on you as the film goes on. I like the way she works as a team with Chris, who's the kind of male protagonist with her for a lot of the movie. Um, at first, she's kind of, I'm not big on how she is. Um, but then, as I say, she, Eliza Dushku uh, portrays her quite well, I think. And you kind of like her more and more as a character as the film goes on. So I think she's underrated. I think she's kind of a fighter slash survivor for me. Um, she becomes more of a fighter as the film gets towards its closure. For me, I think I consider her somewhat underrated. So I'm going to put her in the underrated category. Next up, we have Ginny. Perhaps my favourite Friday the 13th final girl, I think, or at least certainly part two is one of my favourite of those films that I've seen. Um, she's kind of genuine. I think she's sincere. She's not shallow or not so shallow like a lot of Friday the 13th characters are, I think. Um, she has, uh, a, she's kind of intelligent in the way she deals with Jason at the end of the part two film. So I think she's a warrior. Um, not quite an iconic figure for me again that may be because I don't regard the Friday the 13th films in that higher you know as particular highlights of horror for me although I do appreciate they are sort of they have their place in horror history and the slash of history in particular but yeah I think Ginny's a warrior moving on to Sally Hardesty from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre now I do appreciate a lot of people would have her higher than I'm going to place her this is going to be a hot take I think I'm going to put Sally into Leave It to Fate and I'm going to explain why but for me, it's a classic film, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but her character for me is, isn't really a match for some of these other 
final girl characters on this list i don't think anyway she does go through a lot of awful circumstances in this situation it's terrible she's being tormented by these awful people these awful men and um for me she is therefore in a in a terrible situation perhaps many of us would be as scared and frightened in that situation as she is right but you know just comparing it to other final girls and other characters and the fact that all I can remember her for is, is a lot of her screaming in the film. She, I'm going to put her in Leave It to Fate for that reason. But I still root for her to survive, so I wouldn't put her in Leave It to the Killer. But anyway, next up is another icon. Surely she can't be anywhere else. Nancy Thompson from the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. Uh, Heather Langenkamp is a legend as well. Um, you know, rather like Sigourney Weaver, she's immortalised this character. So iconic um she deals with a foe here incredibly difficult to deal with someone who's in your dreams in your nightmares um and she's great i i think she's very brave and bold in the way she faces up to freddy all sorts of iconic scenes in in that uh in those films as well um like her a lot in the third film too she's an icon next up we have beth bixler a more recent film here one of them perhaps the most recent so far actually so from uh, this year, Evil Dead Rise, Beth Bixler was in, and um, you know, I like the way she develops as a character. Um, she's definitely a fighter. I like her standoff with her sister towards the end. That's all very entertaining. Um, I really like Beth as a character. A good portrayal by Lily Sullivan, I think that's the actress's name. Apologies if I got that wrong. That would be embarrassing. Uh, but yeah, she is a warrior for me. Um, Perhaps I wouldn't mind seeing her in other films, actually, from Evil Dead, but whether that will happen or not, I guess, remains to be seen. Next up is Chris Higgins from Friday the 13th Part 3 now. Um, I'm going to put her in underrated, I think. I think Chris Higgins, um, again, one of these final girls I like more towards the end of the film. I don't feel that she's given a huge amount of depth, uh, to be honest, in throughout the sort of start and middle of the film but towards the end the way she fights jason is fantastic and she really gives jason a run for his money and that is what wins me over with chris higgins is her sort of uh, her fight her performance uh, against jason uh towards the end of part three i think she's underrated for that reason she is a pretty cool friday the 13th final girl Next up, we have uh, Erin from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake. Um, I think she's a leave it to fate, to be honest. So another Texas Chainsaw Massacre final girl, putting leave it to fate. Right, so I think she is... Uh, I like the way she fights against Leatherface towards the end of the movie, of this one. She does have some character, but she runs into a lot of trouble. In a lot of this film, she's getting her friends into trouble and she's running around, running into more trouble each time she runs to another place. She seems to run into a place where there's more trouble. I suppose that's not necessarily her fault, but she just seems to get herself and her friends into, into lots of problems. She doesn't, for me, she, she doesn't get away when she should be getting away from, from that whole scenario uh, as it's getting darker and darker. So I think she's a little bit to fate. I do like her resilience towards the end of the film and her fight against Leatherface then but for me she's 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 not the best of final girls I don't think that's not to say I actually think Jessica Biel does a, a pretty good job acting as this character but yeah next up we've got a underrated for me this is definitely an underrated final girl so she this is Natalie and she starred in um she was in Hellfest in 2018 perhaps not a very well-known slasher film but this is a film where these characters, a bit like the Friday the 13th setup, you know, it's very classic slasher formula. They all go to this theme park and there is a killer amongst the sort of people dressed in, you know, horror costumes and everything um, that uh, her friends are gradually killed off one by one in the classic slasher way. And she is, is the last one, I think, um, by the end of the film, I think, right? And um, she is, I, for me, I think she's got a good head on her shoulders as a final girl. Um, she is sensible. She's a bit cautious as well. At, but out of all the groups, she seems to me like to be the most sensible one. She's the kind of girl you wouldn't mind taking back to your parents, actually, if I can, if I can say that. Um, you know, and she is, for me, definitely an underrated final girl from Hellfest. 
that's the film. I recommend it if you've not seen that because it's not a very well-known slasher film. It's quite recent, um, but she's an underrated one for me. Uh, do I put her in? I suppose she's, yeah, she's she's fine just there, just behind Jesse Burlingame, head of Chris Higgins. Uh, so next up, we've got Kirsty Cotton from Hellraiser, um, from Hellraiser Films. I think she's definitely a warrior. She's almost iconic, actually. Um, or perhaps she is iconic, to be fair. For me, Hellraiser, Pinhead's sort of my icon um, as a villain. And I'm not the biggest fan of Hellraiser. I like, I really like the second film and the vision of hell in that film. And I do like Kirsty a lot as a character as well. And she faces terrible circumstances. Uh, I think she has a really messed up family. Let's put it that way. Kirsty has a really messed up family and she's very brave the way she faces all these awful situations. Uh, so she's at least a warrior therefore. But for me, I think perhaps not quite an icon. I don't feel the impacts with her, maybe as much as some of these others that I'm going to come to shortly as well. In fact, one up next, Laurie Strode, straight into icon. Um, of course, one of the ones that started it all. She's iconic partly for that reason, for the original Halloween film. And I love Jamie Lee Curtis, the way she's developed that character over the course of the franchise as well. So for me, undoubtedly, Laurie Strode is an icon. Next up, we have kind of at the other end of the scale of the Halloween films. I have to say, Sarah Moy, is, this isn't the best of... This is a terrible film. And to be fair, that's kind of the main reason. I don't really think this final girl is very good either. Harry in Resurrection is uh, really bad. I mean, it's it's very shallow. It's kind of from that early 2000s era where you had a lot of those films where, you know, the cast are kind of beautiful, um, uh, but there's not much depth to the story. There is just, you know, the film, this film is really dark because we can't really see much in it with what happens uh, in a lot of cases too. So it's not very... Really, not even that entertaining and it's just pretty bad i mean it's kind of bottom of the barrel of the halloween movies for me um and her character you know what she just doesn't have that much screen time either there's there's screen time of these other weird characters or shallow characters too but yeah i i don't really think sarah can go anywhere else but leave it to kill the killer for me um just because the film is you just want it over with really i think with for me with that film if you like halloween resurrection okay if, you know power to you and everything but not for me uh next up we've got um lauren avera's sienna sure from terrified 2 the terrified films are really brutal there you have to have a strong stomach for them they're extremely gory but i love terrifier 2 uh i really like it because of Sienna Shaw and Lauren Levera's portrayal of Sienna. I also like actually Elliot Fulham's portrayal of Jonathan to the brother. I think the way their relationship is developed and the characters developed provide for really strong scenes later on in the film. I really like Sienna as um, a person as well. She's got certainly got a bit of an innocence to her. She's got a strength to her. Again, one of these final girls that faces very traumatic um circumstances within her own family having lost her dad and i love the vision of her or the sort of visual of her dressed as a sort of valkyrie angel which is just something really quite stunning um but you know the depth of her character is 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 for me actually she wins you over more and more you're completely invested in her by the time she faces art you're actually really rooting for her to defeat Art the Clown. And she is definitely a warrior at the least. She, for me, could become an icon with time, um, but but it's a bit early to say. I actually think Cody Leach said something very, very similar, and I just feel exactly the way he does uh, about Sienna. I think she's got real potential, definitely a warrior for, for you know, the way she faces Art the Clown. Next up, we have Alexa Woods uh, from Alien vs. Pred Predator. Not a film that is well regarded. I know it's sort of hated on quite a bit, actually. Um, I like the spectacle of the film, though, and I do like Alexa a lot. I think she's actually a warrior. Now, she might not be in a very good film, but I like her character a lot, and I like what she deals with, the way she deals with it, and she's pretty strong. I think she's a warrior. I think she's even better than just a little bit underrated. Um, I'm a big fan of hers. And don't mind that film either. It's sort of one of those guilty pleasure type films to me, but I just really like Alexa as a character. Next up, we've got um, Alice Hardy from the original Friday the 13th film. Don't care too much for this film, to be honest. 
Um, and therefore, it's hard to really root for her character by the end, although she does have a good face off with um, the mum, uh, Pamela. Uh, but for me, not so much one I'm likely to root for much. I think I'm going to put her in to leave it to fate. Um, maybe she's a little underrated, actually, to be fair. I'll probably put her top and leave it to fate here. Uh, yeah, not one so much for me. I'm not a big fan of the original Friday the 13th. I just think it's kind of boring, to be honest with you. Um, maybe a hot take. Next up, we've got Rocky from Don't Breathe. I've only seen the first film. I think there's been a sequel. I've not seen that. Uh, Rocky, I'm going to put leave it to the killer, partly because of who she is. She is a criminal, really. Um, I do like the way she she's she gets quite very courageous towards the end of that film, but I find it hard to root for her as just you know she's essentially a criminal. So I'm kind of like, well, can't really root for her to be honest. So I put her in leave it to the killer. Uh, maybe a controversial one that one. Next up, we got Sarah from The Descent. Uh, Sarah Carter, I really like her. Not quite iconic for me for some reason. I do think she has a lot of trauma that she has to deal with. You know, she loses her partner at the start of the film in that awful car accident. Uh, and she deals with the claustrophobia of those caves with her friends and her friends being picked off one by one by the crawlers. Uh, things get from bad to worse from her. But she's very heroic and very brave by the end of the film. The way she fights the crawlers um, is something, you know, her transformation is is the appeal, I think, in this descent. She's definitely a warrior at least for me. Um, and uh, yeah, this warrior list is starting to fill up here with, with some recent, more recent films as well. So certainly some of the less classics here we're getting in. Next up, we've got Sidney Prescott. Now, I think when I saw the Scream film, original Scream, a couple of Scream films originally, I wasn't sure I, I would necessarily call Sidney Prescott iconic, but she's become iconic to me from that franchise. If you think about it, the Scream films are the big kind of slasher films from the 1990s um and sydney is i think she's a great character um i love the way she fights against the ghost faces and she's sort of you know she's she's very genuine uh in the way she is and um Neve campbell is great uh, as her i think she's going to go straight into icon um for me um but originally, I'm not sure I would have put her in icon, but but she's grown on me a lot over time as well. Uh, so next up, we've got Tree Gelbman from Happy Death Day. I think she's going to go underrated. Uh, for me, I like Tree a lot. I think she's just, you know, uh, the way Jessica Roth portrays her and uh, takes on that character, she's kind of got a cheekiness and a good sense of humour. She's, you know, if you've not seen Happy Death Day, this is the film she's in. Happy Death Day. She has to sort of go through her own death, relive her own death time and time again. Uh, when she dies, she wakes up again to face the same day again, the day she dies, hence the name of the film Happy Death Day. Um, and she puts up a, a pretty, you know, I say she puts up a fight. She doesn't really actually, she keeps dying again and again until she starts to realize and really tries to find out who it really is that's killing her. She has some fun with the repeat days, the Groundhog days. She has a lot of fun with those. And that's what drew me closer to her character and made me feel pretty entertained. And, um, you know, she just has this kind of lovable quality uh, about her, I think, as well, in the in the way she sort of interacts with other characters in the film. Um, just a lot of fun. So for me, she's kind of underrated as a final goal because of her entertainment value and, and and the fact i think she's she's just just does everything in good humor um yeah but i don't think she's quite a warrior not quite a warrior maybe over time i change my mind but yeah tree gelman's going into underrated next time we got trish jarvis i think this is going to be a another one of these perhaps controversial things i don't sort of feel that much about this character or towards this character really to sort of go I'm just going to say leave it to fate therefore I know Tommy Jarvis is popular and I do like Tommy um, so yeah I think Trish for me is leave it to fate I don't dislike her at all uh, so yeah I think she's just a, a leave it to fate one for me next up we got Whitney who is also for me a leave it to fate one uh, she spends most of Friday the Friday the 13th remake um, actually captured by Jason and that's about it. So uh, that's all we kind of see of her, really, for a lot of the film. So it's hard to really sort of root for her a lot because of that. So I can't quite put her in underrated or as a sort of survivor character, though she is somewhat of a survivor for me in this film. Um, but that's where she's going to end up. Zoe, uh, Zoe Davis. 
uh, is from the Escape Room films. She's next up here. Um, I think she's pretty smart. Is she a fighter? Sort of. I think our pair at top underrated. Um, I don't feel necessarily super inspired by her as a character, but I do think she is very smart the way she deals with all the escape room stuff and it's different escape rooms. Um, and I like how her relationship with Ben kind of builds up over the two films as well. So there's a lot to like about Zoe. Um, I'm not the biggest escape room fan. I prefer films like Cube and, and those sorts of survival horror stuff. Um, but I, I liked the second film more than the first one, if I remember right, when I did my tier list. But yeah, she's kind of underrated for me. Next up, we've got um, Danny from Midsummer. Um, this is one where I have very mixed feelings on Danny. I think she's really, you know, she has terrible circumstances. Another one of these final goals with this kind of sad backstory. And she has this kind of dick of a boyfriend as well, right? Although he meets a really gruesome fate, actually, which, um, you know, I know he's a bit of a, you know what, but uh, I'm not sure he was quite deserving of of, of a fate as nasty as that. Um, uh, but, but you know, Danny, she's sort of, I like her as a character, but she goes, she, she gets pulled in by the cult. She's quite impressionable. Um, and although... It's hard for her to, to really get out of that situation at all. I mean, it's perhaps even a life or death type choice for her, to be honest. I think I'd put her in the underrated. Like, it doesn't make sense because I don't think she's underrated as such, but she's kind of middle for me in terms of how I regard her as a final goal. So I have mixed feelings about Danny. I think she's brilliantly portrayed by Florence Pugh, who is absolutely great in this film, let's be honest. Florence Pugh puts in a great performance. Um... But as a character, I've kind of had mixed feelings with her, despite her awful circumstances and boyfriend and all that stuff. Um, next up and lastly, we've got Alice Johnson. Alice Johnson from Nightmare on Elm Street 4 and 5. Not films I care that much about. I actually quite like Ford, actually, to be fair. Um, yeah, she's just underrated for me, uh, kind of in the middle. I uh, don't dislike her at all. Actually, I think she kind of grows on me uh, as the Dream Master film goes on. Dream Child is so bad that it's hard to really make a call so much on a character in that film. I don't think that um, Lisa Wilcox does a bad job at all in that film, but I think the film is just so badly done uh, and, and put together that it's it, it makes her not to be so, so, you know, it's hard to dissociate her from that. But yeah, I think she's probably underrated for me is Alice from Nightmares 4 and 5. That's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Do drop a sub if you enjoy these kind of videos. Um, and otherwise, until next time, until the next time, we will do another horror tier list pretty soon when I'm doing my next horror films first watch tier list. Hope to see you there for that. That will include the likes of Cobweb, Saw 10, and, um, you know, um, uh, a couple of other films I've seen recently that have just left me temporarily in that moment. Otherwise, thanks everyone for watching and bye for now.